Okay, kids, uh, level four of quest number one is called The View from Outside. And um, that's because you, uh, by the end of this, are going to be thinking about how people who are not you see you. Um, but we are going to spend some time first thinking about what parts of culture and cultural identity are internal and what parts are external. Like, you know, obviously I am a member of uh, the Bald Club for Men. Uh, there are many people who are in that club uh, who are great. Uh, Charles Barkley, uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, uh, okay, that might be it. Uh, but so, you know, what part of your identity is external? What part is internal? And then uh, we're going to get into some readings, uh, specifically a series of poems uh, by a bunch of different authors who are all in one way or another responding to people who are outside of them and outside of their culture and misunderstanding them or putting expectations on them that are unrealistic. All right, and, and after you've taken a look at those poems, and I, and I assure you, you could be like, I hate poetry, because there are people who are like that. Um, these are very good poems. They're not difficult to understand, and they get at issues that maybe you yourself have even faced. Okay, I trust me, you're going to be fine with these poems. And after that, there are two more stories from the Moth. That was the storytelling organization from level three. Um, these are both stories. Uh, there's one by uh, a, a young woman named Eliza Cosme, who's talking about being in kindergarten. Um, and there's one uh, by a gentleman named Christian McBride, who is one of contemporary jazz's best bass players. Both of them are talking about uh, points in their lives when somebody else has put their own expectations on them. Uh, and they've sort of sought the approval of these outside people uh, and sort of how that goes for them. Okay, and then your um, your final activity for uh, this level is, is one that is not only good for you for this level, but also good for you for future things. Uh, you're going to take a trip downstairs to the College and Career Center. You're going to uh, visit with Miss AJ. Uh, assuming it's still Miss AJ, I'm making this video in the summer. Fingers crossed. We like Miss AJ. Um, but you are going to sit down and you're going to write a personal statement. And this is a personal statement that could be used next year or the year after when you are starting to look at colleges and send them information about yourself. Um, and, and even if you don't use it word for word as you have written it uh, for this level, you can use parts of it when you get to that college application stage. But this is a personal statement about a time in your life when you were judged by someone else, when someone outside of you and who didn't understand you, who didn't respect your culture, put expectations on you and put um, you know, their judgment on you. And how did you respond to that? Were you able to overcome that judgment in a positive way? Were you able to change their mind about you? Uh, this is uh, something that, uh, again, Nobody knows this story but you. This should be something that you are willing and able to tell. Let's take a look at the rubric, though, to see how it'll be scored. You notice that there are there's a literature standard. Uh, there's actually a couple of literature standards. There's also a media literacy standard. Uh, and again, basically, that's are you paying attention to the things that you're reading? Are you paying attention to the things that you're seeing and listening to? Uh, but it's that narrative standard in the middle that uh, is really important for this level. Uh, your personal statement is going to clearly identify the outside judgment, all right? Um, one of the worst ways to write a narrative is to not let your audience know what is happening inside your own head or your character's head. Um, if we have to guess as an audience about what is real and what are the expectations that somebody else is putting on you, uh, it's not going to be a successful narrative. So clearly explain uh, this was the person, this was how they were judging me, okay? And you want to tell a compelling story of proving that outside judgment wrong, or at least demonstrating as part of your narrative that that outside judgment is wrong. And, and the word compelling there is kind of important. Um, when you are applying to colleges, the one thing that is going to differentiate you from everybody else who applies. It's not your GPA, that's a number. It's not your ACT score, that's a number. It's not your class rank, that's a number. It's your personal statement. It's your college application essay. Uh, and if your college application essay is boring, uh, you are not gonna get into the college you wanna get into. You want that college admissions counselor to say, holy cow, 
this is a person I want at my school. So compelling, okay? I really want you to think about how you can tell this narrative in a way that moves you. And, and I really want you to think about the way the storytellers, uh, Cosme and McBride, have told their stories, about the way that they use imagery that repeats, or the way that they, and Christian McBride especially, saves the big reveal for the end. There's all of this built-up anticipation that he finally relieves at the end. Um, use those techniques. Make this story compelling. Okay? Good luck.